stay and are free. With open hands, Lord, I bring everything and nothing less. My best, my all. You deserve my every breath. My my song I surrender I surrender all all to you Jesus I surrender I surrender all I trust you I'm letting go I'm letting go To give you Everything and nothing less My best My Oh, I 
nothing and nothing less My best My all You deserve You deserve my every breath My life my song Good morning Coast Hills family and friends. My name is Julia. I'm the Director of Ministries for Youth and Worship here at Coast Hills Community Church, where we are a Jesus-centered community creating gracious space through acts of generous love. As always, if there's anyone new lo logging on here this morning, we want you to know that you are welcome here in our Coast Hills community, and we are glad that you have joined us to worship our God online together. Friends, I have just a couple of announcements. First off, if you are someone who has a youth within our church, we do not have youth this Thursday, and the following Thursday is small group night. So your youth leader will be, con your youth's youth leader will be contacting you to let you know what the plan is for small group night. But as always, us leaders are available throughout the week if needs arise. Secondly, as announced last week, we would love to offer the opportunity for anybody who's ready to be baptized. So if you think that you want to take the step to be baptized, if you want to learn more about baptism, please contact myself, Kevin, or Wendy, and we would love to journey with you um, through the step in your faith. Friends, would you pray with me as we continue in our service? Lord God, I thank you for this community of Coast Hills, the beauty of it. I thank you for the opportunity to worship you together. Lord, I pray that we are attentive to your voice this morning, what you would have to say to us both as individuals and as a community. And as a response, we may live a life to wor of worship to you, O oh God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Coast Hills and friends, and welcome back to another service here, online service at Coast Hills Community Church, where we aspire to be a Jesus-centered community, creating gracious space through acts of generous love. That statement I cannot get tired of, and we are looking forward to, as things open up, and we can use their ministry center in different ways to be able to continue to um, meet that vision and mission of being a Jesus-centered community, creating gracious space through acts of generous love. Sunday, um, March 27th, next Sunday, just before our live gathering at A.J. McClellan Elementary School, we want to invite you to be a part of um, a th- about a 20-25-minute 20, um, gathering we're going to do. Uh, we usually do this uh, as an update financially where we, where we are and where we're headed. Uh, we do that usually three months before AGM, and uh, our AGM is at the end of May this year, and so we want to be able to do this in a way that is um, with, uh, with live, real people. So please come at uh, about, it, we want to get started at 10 o'clock, so if you come just before 10, we're going to meet in the library, and we'd love to do that. If you want to get a head start on that, you can look at our financial statements that are on the giving section of our website and um, we'd love to have your input and your feedback. One other thing, we are looking for others to join our leadership team, our elder team. We call it uh, leadership team here at Coast Hills. And so if you know someone that you can nominate or suggest, let us know. We'd love to follow up with those people. Um, The leadership team gives oversight to the mission, vision, as well as the finances of Coast Hills. We would love more on that team. So let's get into our scripture for today. I've entitled this sermon, Good News, Bad News. The first, uh, in the first week, we looked at the original meaning of the term good news in the Greek, which, which uh, the, the term was euangelion, which means good news. We discovered that it started out as a Roman military propaganda term, When the Roman Empire annexed more territory through military action, they would send out messengers of the euangelion, messengers of good news. 
See, the peace of Rome was being spread throughout the known world at that time through conquest and violence. And this was seen as good news. When the early Jesus followers learned of this and became uh, more understand, had a better understanding of who Jesus was and what it looks like to announce good news, they subverted that word and that term. And so we see the gospel writers using the term good news. We see Paul using good news, but it meant something much different. When they were referring to Jesus' rule and reign, it was the good news that Jesus was Lord and Caesar was not. It was the good news of the kingdom of God, not the Roman Empire. And the good news looked vastly different than empire of its day. And I imagine that was good news for many people, but it was also bad news for others. Jesus' announcement of his kingdom and his kingship would be good news for the poor, good news for the oppressed, good news for the ones on the margins. But it was probably, and I would pose to you that it was, it was uh, taken as bad news and understood as bad news for the ones that were in power and were trying to maintain those structures of oppression and power because it meant that their leadership would be threatened. So for some, the good news of Jesus was seen maybe not as good news at all. And we're going to look at that in a moment. And last week, we looked at the way that Jesus announces good news. He was, in a sense, uh, announcing good news around a table and in relationship with people. And a lot of times, he was being criticized for being around a table, receiving the hospitality from people of ill repute or people that the Pharisees and the religious leaders of that day thought were, um, on, uh, <laughs> thought were uh, well, the, the term they used in the, in the NLT were scum. The tax collectors and the people that were put on the outside, this is who Jesus was with and announcing good news to. And so today, we're going to grapple with this question as we get into our scripture. How do I understand the good news of Jesus? And what does the good news of Jesus mean for me? We're going to briefly look at two stories in one parable in Luke today, all within chapter 18 and 19 of Luke. So let's look at, first of all, Luke 18, starting at uh, verse, uh, Luke chapter 18, starting at verse 18, actually. A certain ruler asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. All of these I have kept since I was a boy, the ruler said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was wealthy. Now, I'm, because of time, I'm not going to continue this story. You can continue reading the story and, and into the next story that we're going to read too if you want. But for this rich young ruler, the good news of Jesus actually made him sad. He was desiring to understand what he needed to do because it sounded like he did everything the right way. It says, I have done, he says, I have done all of this since I was a boy, referring to the commandments that Jesus talked about. This ruler, this rich ruler, seems to be so confident, so well organized, so determined, he looks into the face of the one that he calls good and he turns away sad. 
it was as if Jesus was able to narrowly focus on the one thing this person was holding on to. And he wasn't willing to let go. And so, he turns away sad. Now, I'm not sure... It, I'm not sure we need to sell all of our possessions and follow Jesus. Uh, um, but what Jesus was speaking to this ruler, this rich ruler, this was his thing. And so my question for us might be, what might be the one thing we or I am holding on to? That is not allowing me to see the good news as G of Jesus as good news. What is that one thing that actually, as I hold on to it, might make me look to the face, in the face of Jesus with sadness and turn away? By contrast, we're going to contrast this story now in Luke 19 with the rich, rich young ruler. Um, a few verses down, we have Jesus interacts with Zacchaeus, a wealthy chief tax collector who is also very intrigued with Jesus. And so I want to just uh, look at the differences in these stories a little bit. Both are rich men that Jesus is interacting. Both are rich men that are intrigued with Jesus. So let's look at Luke chapter 19 verses 1 and on. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but he was so short that he couldn't see over the crowd, so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up to him and said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down, and at once welcomed him gladly. All the people began to mutter, he has gone to be, with the, to be a guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay them back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Now, unlike the rich ruler earlier in the previous story, we know how Zacchaeus became rich on the backs of ordinary and poor people. No one in Jericho would have liked Zacchaeus very much. This is the kind of person regular Jews would have despised. Not only was he a tax collector, he was a chief tax collector. He would have made money from his own tax collection, plus the extra from the tax collectors that were under him. <laughs> and, and they were also taking more taxes than they should have. And so Zacchaeus here was part of a corrupt, oppressive system that was helping the Roman Empire maintain power all the while keeping the poor poorer and the rich richer. And everyone knew that it was their money that was making Zacchaeus' house larger making his clothes finer, and making his food richer. I think one of the main things Luke wants the reader to see is the stark contrast between each of these rich men. One seemed like he had it all together, uh, and came by his money honestly, lived as a faithful Jew, but wasn't willing to allow his normal way of life to be upset by Jesus, reordered in the way Jesus would want it to be reordered. The other man, a rich man, 
Zacchaeus was despised, corrupt. Um, the, Luke even adds in that he was short. <laughs> so he wouldn't have had a, a lot of stature. It, it was just another little rib into who Zacchaeus was. And that he was part of a system that was oppressing people. But guess what? He was able to see his wrongdoing and was willing to change. The good news changed his life in real ways. Now I want us to look at, in the midst of trying to understand these two stories, we're going to look at a short little parable of Jesus that Luke puts in before these two stories, as if Luke is setting us up for what is to come, looking at these two stories. Um, And so uh, as we're looking at Luke 18 and 19, in the middle of these things, there's, there is this uh, parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. I want to start reading at verse 9 here. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else, Jesus told them this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth to all, a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He wouldn't even look up to heaven, but he beat his chest and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. I think that little parable is having us understand these two stories. Maybe the theme here is how we see others and how we see ourselves in light of who God is. You see, the first first rich man didn't really see a need for change in his life, even though Jesus suggested the change he needed to make. And I wonder, maybe Zacchaeus is the tax collector in this parable that Jesus is telling. And he's praying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And the story here, we have Jesus inviting himself to dinner at Zacchaeus' house. And maybe that was the beginning of the prayer being answered. Then, after being in Jesus' presence, and maybe some long conversations over a meal, We have Zacchaeus revealing his repentance that comes not only with a change of heart, but also with action and reparations. The good news of Jesus motivated Zacchaeus to try and repair the damage that he had caused in a way that he would continue to announce the good news to others. You see, Zacchaeus' change has ripple effects in the lives of others. Not only does Zacchaeus receive the good news of Jesus for himself, he becomes the messenger of the euangelion. He becomes the messenger announcing good news to others that Jesus has indeed come for the poor and brokenhearted through Zacchaeus' actions. Zacchaeus, who once took advantage of the poor, now because now becomes a living embodiment of the good news. (laughs) Now, that's the beauty of the good news, of how it gets a hold of, of, of us. But we first need to, in a sense, be humbled to admit that we 
need a redirection in our lives, a repurposing in our lives, or if you want to use a biblical ter term, a repentance in our lives, to be able to allow Jesus to mess with us, so to speak. See, the first rich young ruler didn't allow Jesus to mess with his ordered life. And I wonder what would have happened if he didn't turn away sad, but he would have had more of a conversation with Jesus as to what that would look like for him. We see what happens in Zacchaeus' life where this, this, uh, uh, this good news in his life is received with a humble heart and a willingness to change for the goodness of not only his own life, but the lives of others. Um, I came across this quote by Rich Velotis. Uh, he's a pastor in, uh, in New York City. Uh, and, and he says this, the gospel is good news for the oppressed and the oppressor, for the powerful and the powerless, both liberated but in much different ways. The oppressed are raised up from the destructive burden of inferiority and invisibility. The oppressor from the destructive illusion of superiority. You see, in the kingdom of God, we're all put on level playing fields of our identity of who we are. And as we somehow think that we are more superior than others or uh, consider, us, consider ourselves um, in a sense better than others, we, we are not going to be able to receive the good news as good news for ourselves. But we will walk away sad. But if we can see ourselves as people in need of the good news of Jesus, of a redirection, a repentance, a refocus in our lives, then not only we ourselves could receive the good news, but we would then be living embodied, announcing, announcers, messengers of the announcement of the good news of Jesus for all. So what does the good news mean for me? What does the good news mean for you? Well, I hope that we are able to see that we need a realignment by Jesus, the true King, Jesus, the Lord, that would realign our lives, <clears throat> that would look like good news for all. Would you be encouraged? Would you allow yourself to look into the life of Jesus long enough that you wouldn't walk away sad? but you'd allow Jesus to transform your heart and transform your actions in order to be a living embodiment of the good news for others. Would you pray with me? Jesus, help us grapple with what this good news of who you are means for our lives. Thank you for these stories that are written in your scripture, how we could easily be one, either, the, either the, the rich person that walks away or like Zacchaeus, the rich one who has had his hands in the corruption but is willing to listen and learn and to walk and follow you to announce good news to others. Help us grapple what that means for us in our own lives. 
Oh God, I pray that we wouldn't turn away in sadness, but we would continue to look to you with joy. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Jesus, the name above every Friends, thanks for being here. Would you receive this benediction? Would you go from here to share the good news with all you meet? Not only in words, but also through your actions. And may the blessings of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be among you and with you. Amen. Man, I want to 
want to tell y'all something, man. Man, I'm not going to let these material things get in my way, y'all. I'm trying to get somewhere. <laughs> I'm trying to get somewhere that's real and pure and true and eternal. Toby, can you go with your boy? Let's go! Father God, I am clay in your hands. Help me to stay that way through all life's demands. Because they chip and they nag and they pull at me. And every little thing I make up my mind to be. Like I'ma be a daddy who's in the mix. And I'ma be a husband who stays legit. And I pray that I'm an artist who rises above. The road that is wide and filled with self-love. Everything that I see draws me. Though it's only in you that I can truly see That it's a feast full of eyes, a low blow to purpose And I'm a little kid at a three ring circus I don't wanna gain the whole world and lose my soul Paparazzi flashes, say they think that it's you But they don't know that who you are is not what you do True, we get it twisted when we peek at the charts Yo, before we part from the start, what's your heart? You a pimp? Hustler, tell me what's your title? America has no more stars, now we call them idols You said idol, while we teach prosperity The first thing to prosper should be inside me Not because of 22 is on the range But Christ came in range, we said yes, now we change Not the same, even though I met a fall Since I got that call, no more song, now I'm all yep.